Hi everyone, this is Professor Vishal Gupta at the USC Marshall School of Business. This video is for BUAD 425, Data Analysis for Decision Making. So in this video, I'm going to continue working with our Trojan Horse data set from the lab, and I'm going to show you how to use the output from the decision tree in Jump to create a confusion matrix for the testing set. Now what I'm about to do is pretty similar to what we did in the loans data set earlier in class in creating confusion matrices, and I have an earlier video on doing that. So if you'd like to challenge yourself, I suggest you watch that other video about the loans data set, and then return here and try to create the confusion matrix for yourself. Only if you're having trouble should you take a look at this and see how to do it. All right, so let's get started. Here you'll see I have exported the data set from Jump, including the predictions for each line. If you don't know how to do this, take a look at the previous video on decision trees and Jump for the Trojan Horse data set. And in particular, I just want to highlight that I have here in column Q, the actual success of each row. So one is means that the customer actually bought the box historically. I have here in column W, what I was predicting for my decision tree. So in this case, for example, for row one, I'm predicting that the customer would return. And in column S, I have this testing variable. And this indicates whether each row should be used in the testing set or the training set. And I created for this for you earlier. So ones here indicate that the data should be used in the testing set. Now there are many ways to create a confusion matrix. I showed you many videos on how to do this. I think the simplest way to do this is with a pivot table. So I'm going to go to data pivot table. Excel is going to ask me where the data is and where it wants me to place the pivot table. I'll just say okay. And now when I think about my confusion matrices, I remember that how are they structured? Along the left in the row area is what actually happened. And the variable that corresponds to what actually happened in my data set is in this case success. And along the top, I have what I predicted would happen. So in this case, it would be the decision tree prediction. So I'll put that into my column labels. All right, so now I just need to fill in these four values. And as we talked about before, because this data set has the same number of rows in every column, it doesn't actually matter which column I pick. So I'm going to pick for fun, uh, classic gentleman, or actually I'll pick comic for fun, drop it into values, and change comic from sum to count. By changing it to count, I'm just counting how many rows fall into each of these four buckets, i.e. how many rows of comic. But again, because all the columns have the same number of rows, it doesn't matter which column I look at to count the rows. All right, so this looks like it's almost our confusion matrix. The one challenge is that I've used here all 2,000 data points, i.e. 1,000 for testing and 1,000 for training. If I want to limit myself to just the testing data set, the easiest way to do this is with a filter. So I can go here to the testing column, drag testing into the report filter, and you'll see it now appears up here. And I can change from all to saying that I only want to look at ones where there are testing is a one, i.e. for the testing data set. And now you can see I'm only seeing a thousand data points and this is the confusion matrix. Now this is organized a little bit strangely because here the first column is buy and here the first column is row is return. So I'm just gonna change the rows to be sorted in the other direction. And now this looks more familiar to what we're used to seeing. All right, so that's all there is to creating a confusion matrix for the decision tree example. The case asks you to do some analysis now and to look at this confusion matrix and compute some things. For example, the expected profit per month. I did this in class in some detail, so I'm going to just do this very quickly now. The first thing you want to think about is what is the percent of the testing set you ship to? Well, in this case, I'm shipping to only the people that I predict would buy. It would make no sense to ship to someone that I predicted returned. So that's this 324 divided by the full thousand people in the testing set. So I'm shipping to about 32% of my customers. Okay, so what are the potential number of shipments I can make? Well, there are 500,000 people in the data set. Sorry, there are 500,000 people in my entire customer base. So Potentially, my model is going to flag about 32% of them. I, my model believes there are 162,000 people out there that would actually like the box. All right, 
how many will I actually ship to? Well, right now in the current strategy, marketing has this guideline of shipping to only 50,000 people. I've already shipped to, to 2,000 of them, so I'll ship to only another 48. But that's only if I have 48,000 people out there that I can find that would like the box. Fortunately, in this case, I see there's 162,000 out there. So I can find my favorite 48,000 to ship to, and I'll ship to them. All right, now what is my expected profit per box? Well, you'll remember from the case that I make $45.50 on every box that's actually bought, and I, make, I lose $4 on every box that's returned to me. So if I look at this, I can say that, well, I make $45.50. What is the probability that if I ship someone a box, they buy it? Looking here, I can see that I shipped to 324 people and 66 of them bought it. So the probability that they buy is 66 divided by 324. In the same way, I lose four bucks on every box that's returned. And what is the probability that someone returns a box? Well, I shipped 324, 258 of them are returned, so I can take 258 divided by 324. And now I see the expected profit for box is about $6. So what are my total expected profits? Well, I would just take these $6 times the 48,000 boxes I shipped, or about $292,000. All right, so that concludes the kind of back of the envelope calculations that you needed to make in the case for the decision tree portion. I suggest if you're having trouble and you want to practice, you go through and do the same thing for the logistic regression portion of the case. I first compute the confusion matrix, and then compute these values to see what the expected profits would be at a threshold of 0.15. There are solutions uploaded on Blackboard. Please feel free to compare it to them. And if you're having any trouble, come find me and ask some questions. Thanks so much.